Hello, my name is Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. We have a wonderful program called Discover Queen Anne's. And what we do, we invite uh, members of our community to come in and tell us who they are and what role they play in the community. We've had a great series. We've started doing a number of the local clergy. We had a Catholic priest this week. This week, I'm delighted to say we have Reverend Holbrook Smith with us. And Reverend Smith, make sure I get this right, from the New Life Community United Methodist Church in Centerville. Correct. And thank you, Reverend, for being with us, okay? You're quite welcome. Now, what we do in the Tell You and all the people at home, we get to know more about you, okay? Mm -hmm. And feel free anytime, any story you want to share, and if you want to plug the church whenever you can, okay. all right? Okay. How about, let's, before we go into you, the New Life Community United Methodist Church in Centerville, mm -hmm. okay, what are your services? We always plug the church first. Okay. New Life Community uh, worship on Sundays. Okay. Uh, we have Bible studies from 9 to 10.15, and the worship service starts at 10.30 Okay. every Sunday. And guests invited or visitors invited? Everyone is welcome. Okay, good. Our doors are open to everyone. I do want to share with everybody two things. One, and we shared this before the air, every Christmas I had the pleasure of singing with your wonderful choir, right. the late and great John Andrews, right. vice principal who we tragically lost at yeah. the high school, invited me. He and uh, Walter Pauls, and it was one of the, uh, probably the best choir, I think, in town. Thank you. And it was a pleasure. And also Mrs. Willie Pauls, definitely knocks on my door every couple <laughs> months when you have different food for sales right. and I recommend that to anybody in the community Good. to make sure they have a chance. Now Reverend, that's a little bit about yourself because you have an interesting background that I know nothing about but some of your neighbors have told me about. Born and raised where? I was born in Ghana. Okay. In Ghana. West Africa. Okay, now tell us about Ghana and tell us about life. Uh, how long you left there and when? I left uh, Ghana when I was 19 okay. years. Okay, well, let's spend, let's spend the next couple minutes talking about those 19 years. Tell me about uh, Ghana. Okay, I grew up in a small village called Gomwa Asen in the central. Say it one more time. Gomwa. Gomwa. Asen. Asen. Yes. Gomwa Asen. Correct. Okay. Thank you. In the central region of Ghana. Okay. Uh, and the language that we speak uh, is Fanti language. Fanti? Yes. Okay. And Ghana Give us an example of Fanti. Uh, Say hello Fred and Fanti or something like that. Or hello friends or something. Mamua Achi. Mamua Achi? And that's good morning. Okay. Mamua Achi? Mamua Achi. Mamua Achi. Achi. Okay. Okay. That's good morning. That's good morning. Okay. Correct. Uh, Ghana was a uh, European colony. Okay. Who, who is it? Fr uh, it's who, English. English, okay. Yes. Okay. So the, uh, because of the European influence in the colonial uh, time, uh, they introduced uh, English um, as the official language, okay. Uh, okay. but that can only be spoken by those who go to school. Okay. Uh, but within the country, there are about 108 languages and Dialect. Different dialects uh, of the mainland. Correct. Okay. Okay. And so uh, those who go to school from first grade to the 10th grade uh, uh, had opportunity to learn English. Uh, at the time when I was growing up, you had to go through uh, first through 10th grade before you could go to uh, sit uh, common entrance examination. Okay. And when you pass and your Parents have money to pay for your high school. Uh, so then you go to the next level. Exactly. Okay. Uh, but if you couldn't afford it, then you have to either learn a trade or do something. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your country in terms of climate, equator. I mean, warm. Well, tell me about. I know, well, we Correct. most Americans know, and I apologize. We know nothing. So help us out. Ghana is uh, uh, the tropics. Uh, it's a tropical land. We okay. uh, the equator uh, is. Just right, uh, right through the country. Right through the country. Okay. But the Greenwich Meridian is uh, right through uh, one of the cities, uh, big cities in Ghana called Tema. It's a warm uh, all year very round. Very warm oh. year round. Uh, during the um, f fall, our fall here, the weather changes a little bit, uh, becomes a little cool. Okay. Uh, but depending on where you are, you uh, we have the northern part, uh, which uh, it's warmer and drier okay. and grassy 
uh, the Savannah area. And help me with the geography. Coastal country? You have, um, yeah. uh, the coastal is in the uh, western part. Okay. Uh, and we, the north uh, shares a border with uh, what we call uh, Burkina Faso. It used to be called Upper Volta. Okay. Uh, now it's Burkina Faso. Then you come to the east. The east shares border with uh, Ivory Coast. And then you come to the west, shares border with uh, Togo. Okay. And when you come to the south, it is the Atlantic City, uh, Atlantic Sea. All right. Yeah. So um, it's. Uh, uh, you got a little bit of everything. You have dry you have regions, dry coastal region, and regions. Then okay. The uh, the forest area when you go to the Ashanti and the Brongahafo region. Uh, where the cocoa plantation is, is is very large. Ghana used to be the world leading producer of cocoa. cocoa. Or chocolate, the yeah. chocolate market chocolate, for us. Yeah. Okay. That's where cocoa. Because now the big fad is when uh, you buy chocolate, it has to, the chocolate has to be uh, not duty free. There's a word for grown on farms oh, that the uh, local correct. individuals own. Yes, it's politically uh, correct among us. Yes, okay, they're right. trying to help the farmers to okay. you know, their produce. So tell me, nice warm uh, climate. What was it like as a kid? As a kid, um, the uh, because of the season uh, during the what we call the summer here, it's it's warm. But the wonderful thing is. Is the humidity is not you like here, right. because the the air, uh, the trees, and I am from the coastal area. Uh, it's about the village I grew up in. It's about twelve miles from the coast, uh, so we have the ocean breeze, and that coast in. is the Atlantic. Let me make sure exactly, might, okay, it's the Atlantic okay. Ocean. Right. And so, uh, growing up uh, as a as a kid, you no, know, I started. Uh, what we call day nursery, kindergarten here, mm -hmm. and then I, at the age of five, uh, my friends were going to school. I was a little younger then, so I cried, and <laughs> my father said, okay. Little did you know what you're getting That's into. right. Okay. I said, I want to go to school with my friends, so okay. even though I wasn't at the age, six years to go to school, but uh, my father was able to uh, Let you go early? Uh, convince me. What did mom and dad do? Mom and dad... My Teachers father was a trader. Oh, uh, a trader. He had a, a mom and pop store okay. uh, where he sold a little bit of everything. everything. Like a general store. General trader, general yes. store. Okay. He uh. would go to the city to get uh, goods uh, and then he would put it in the store. To the local store. Yeah, local store. And How big it. of a town were you? The town, um, growing up, we really didn't care about the population, but about uh, probably. About 500. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, a small, small, a very small, small community. What was the name? Gumwa Asen. Gumwa Asen. Yeah, okay. but now it's grown. Big city. Uh, it's, uh, it's not okay. quite a city, but it's bigger, okay. a lot bigger than when I was growing now, up. Now, before we continue with you, what are the major cities in Ghana? What, what, are we, what should Americans know? What okay. cities? The uh, capital of Ghana is Accra. Uh, Accra? Yes. Okay. Accra. Uh, now, the business is all in English or not? The businesses are done in English. So the government businesses. Exactly. Okay. Since okay. English is the official language, even okay. though not everybody speaks English, only those who uh, go to school speak English. Okay. Uh, but then also you have Kumasi, Kumasi. Uh, in the Ashanti region, okay. which is the second largest uh, city in Ghana. Population country, 7 million, 4 uh, million? Ghana at this time uh, has a population of about 20 million. Oh, 20 uh, million? Yes. Good size. Yes. Okay. When I was uh, living in Ghana, the population was uh, about 12 million. Okay. Uh, but now it's about uh, 20, 20 million and, and okay. plus, actually. Okay. Uh, then you have Tema. Tema okay. is um, about 20 miles from Accra, which is the port city. Okay. Uh, Ghana has two uh, main port uh, where um, the ships uh, come I mean, in with goods. the goods and is it uh, cocoa uh, oil in Ghana no. yes we have yes. Ghana produces oil um, palm nuts oil oil okay. from the palm, palm tree, tree. Okay. yes okay. and also coconut oil okay um, and also uh, granite oil what we call peanut oil here uh, they produce uh, that also there are two kinds of um, oil from the uh, palm. We have the red one that comes from the husk of the ripe uh, 
palm nuts. Okay. And then uh, after that is done, when you crack the nuts, uh, when you crack the shell, there's a nut in there. Uh, the, that also you can uh, Use make somehow. oil okay. in, and which is very, very now, tasteful. Is cocoa number one and then the oil or not? Or has uh, it changed? Ghana at no. this time is second to Ivory Coast. Okay. Uh, Ivory Coast shares border with Ghana and uh, some of the farmers overlap uh, those close to the Ivory Coast border overlap okay. and so what happens is depending on the prices of the cocoa either in Ghana or in Ivory Coast the farmers uh, have the you know, opportunity to either cross the border or sell either way sell, exactly oh, okay. so that affects uh, that but uh, right now uh, Ghana is very close to getting back to the um, uh, being the leading producer and also gold. Coca. Uh, and gold remember and Ghana was um, in the colonial colonial that's days. why the Europeans went there yes? exactly okay. and they named the the country Gold Coast okay because there is abundant of gold in Ghana and there still is oh yeah gold there, there are gold minings the official gold minings and also individuals can actually um, either okay. buy a land and this hard Sounds like work. a beautiful country. Uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it has its uh, like pros and cons everywhere. Like well, go, uh, I interrupt. Let's go back to you you're growing up in a, a small town of mm -hmm. about 500. Mm -hmm. Your dad's running a mom and pop mm -hmm. store. Brothers and sisters? I have uh, three sisters and two brothers. We have okay. five uh, siblings. Oh, good all family. Together. Okay. Yeah. So they let you go to school early. Correct. And continue. I apologize. I cut and you And then um, first grade came and uh, I was able to uh, you know, pass the class, but my father said, uh, you are not grown yet, so uh, repeat the class. Repeat the grade. Yeah, but I did, and uh, so I went through the education system, first to sixth grade. Uh, How would this describe for an American, same type of schools, different, smaller, bigger? When I was growing up, the system was different okay. from here. Uh, the English system? Yes, yeah. the, the English yeah. system, the system in Ghana was different from when I came here. Okay. Uh, there you have to go through sixth grade, then go to what we call the middle school, which right. is four years okay. of middle, middle school education. Then uh, between the middle school from uh, ninth and tenth grade, you can sit common entrance. You, said, you sit for t exam. exams. Exams, okay. and then if you pass and your parents can afford, then you go to the next, uh, step. next step, which is called the secondary school or okay. high school here. Uh, but if you can't or you don't uh, sit for the examination, then you have to go through the 10th uh, year and then uh, write uh, exams, what you call the middle school living certificate exam. Okay. Okay. With that, you can look for a job or you can actually continue your education with that also. Okay, I mean, I, I taught in Australia two years, okay. and they had the same, kind of the same system. Some point you took a series of tests, Correct. which decided you went kind of one way, or, or you went way. more of the trade Correct. way, it sounds like. Uh, any favorite teachers, or any great, were you an athlete, or like plays, or what would you? Yeah, I was very active uh, when I was growing up. I uh, played soccer, I was a goalkeeper. Okay, uh, and got a wonderful soccer. Yeah, they just had the African Cup, correct, right? Cup yes. of okay. Nation, okay. and yeah. they came uh, fourth. Yes, that's uh, okay. Yes, and uh, so soccer is, uh, is, is, is... And you call is, it is, football. Uh, football. Football. Uh, we call it football. Is so that the number one sport in The number one sport in the world, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Americans are the only dummies no, that don't play. It. But we, it's we, number one sport in the world, but it's number one sport in Ghana. Cricket from the British or not? Uh, we play hockey, field hockey. Oh, field hockey. Yes. Okay. And like in the Olympic, the yes, Olympic field Olympic hockey. Olympic field hockey. Okay. Uh, and also uh, athletics, uh, uh, track, track and field. field. Track yeah, and field. I did high jumping and okay. I did... Uh, um, uh, second, uh, second race, no, uh, the, Relay race? Uh, oh, sack race. Uh, sack race. Sack no, you, okay. Yeah, and okay. I did high jumping and long jump. Right. Now, when you're in school, I think it's different. When I was in Australia, it was different. The schools did not have the teams. Mm -hmm. You played for, like, Centerville soccer team, football club. The schools had uh, what we call the inter... In, in, intramural. 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 So yeah. the, the school team, we played each other friendly matches right. and also at a certain time we were all gathered together and we play elimination tournament and okay. so uh, depending on who comes up and you win. We did the same thing with uh, track and field. Okay. Uh, so we all gathered together for about 
for the whole week, actually, from, from Monday through Friday. Competed a Competed, whole week. Yeah, it's, a, uh -huh. it's a very competitive. Oh, and uh, depending on how you rank the best, are selected to represent the whole region, okay. uh, actually district. In a national in the championship. Na and then you continue until you get to the okay. national uh, level. Now, before I, I'm, I'll get back to you, does Ghana have, I mean, Americans were sports mad. Football, but is there is a Ghana professional soccer league, correct? Which is uh, very. We have yeah. a Ghana Black Stars. Is the Ghana Black national Star. team Black okay. Stars? The okay. uh, the 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 team is named after the Ghana flag. Okay. The Ghana flag has a uh, uh, red, uh, green, and yellow. Um, the uh, star is in the middle. Okay, so and that's so where the that name, the, the team gets a correct. black star. Okay. And then you have the uh, the under twenty team right, at the right, national right, okay. Black Matthews, and uh, you have the women also. Uh, what we call, I think, when I was growing up, there mm -hmm. were women didn't play soccer like here until, yeah. until Title Nine seventy three. Yeah. Right, so yeah. after I left, that's when women's soccer became very. Popular okay. in Ghana, so they have a women's team called, I think, Black Princess, uh, okay. something right, like that. Okay. And, and so they're good too. Very good. Okay. Yeah, very good. So let's go back to you. I'm sorry. So you're you're going through school. Mm -hmm. You're involved with sports. Correct. Was religion always part of your life, or not? Correct. So much? Oh, I was. grew up in, um, uh, you know, my parents uh, were members of the Methodist Church. Okay. Uh, and so I grew up in the church. I remember when my mother carried me on her back. Uh, you know how African yes. women wrap their children okay. on their back and uh, be brought to church. So I remember as far back. So I grew up in the church. Sundays, uh, we went to church, we went to Sunday school. Uh, on Saturday, early in the morning, uh, we have what we call children class, Bible class, okay. Uh, okay. five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. Correct. You get up and you go to uh, uh, Bible class where we learn how to recite. How far did your mom have to walk? Oh, uh, from our house to the church was not far, not far. about 10 minutes. Oh, walk. not a bad. Okay. Yeah, so okay. uh, we learned to recite uh, Bible verses and memorize Bible verses. In fact, church was very active part of the school. The oh, school the Methodist Church was correct, involved in the school. Correct. In okay. fact, the the school elementary school that I went was a Methodist primary school. Okay. So. Uh, they make sure that on Sundays you went to school, so somebody from the uh, the school uh, will take attendance <laughs> well, at the church. church or yes, okay. whatever church, whether you went to okay. the Catholic church or right. the even the Muslim, because we okay. had only one school, so we all went to uh, okay. Muslims. And the and schools made sure you exactly, went to church. Exactly, you went to church, and so on Wednesdays. In the morning, the whole school had a service, a service worship service. Okay. And during that time, those who didn't go to church on Sunday, they were called out. And, um, you know, sometimes <laughs> they will be... Spoken to. Yeah, they will give you a <laughs> punish by, you know, giving you something, a piece of a, a field to weed, clear, or place yeah. to sweep. If you, didn't, sweep, go to if you didn't go to church. So the church and the community were very working close. very close together. Help me with Ghana. Uh, many and varied religions. Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, is, the, is Christianity or Muslim? What's the number one religion? At, the, at this time, Christianity is the predominant religion in Ghana. But okay. we have the Muslims are uh, it's uh, a growing. very growing okay. uh, religion. We have uh, the Pentecostals and the Assemblies of God, I mean, okay. Pentecostal is a big thing. So now it's a wide Canada. variety. We have varieties. Okay. At the same time, we have uh, the uh, traditional worshipers, those who don't worship, uh, you know, are not Christians, Christians or okay. don't belong to any a native uh, Ghanaian, native, yeah, Ghan tradition. Ghanaian tradition who okay. worship the ancestral worshipers. Okay. Uh, they pour right. libation and, you know, do their thing. Oh, and so, very interesting, yeah. very interesting. So, so you're in school, you're doing well, uh, you're probably a bit of a star because mom and dad, sounds like they really believed in education. Yeah, my, my, my parents really believe in education. All of us, five of us, uh, they made sure that we had education. And um, so, uh, but I was able to, in my family, my, our older brother was also uh, able to go to secondary school okay. uh, and 
I went to secondary school. So I, after secondary school, uh, which we call high school here, right. I was 19. That's okay. when I left Ghana. Now by um, yourself or the whole family? Or? By myself. Oh, all by yourself. Uh, that was a big move in yes, 19. Yes, yes, it was a big move because uh, at the time, uh, when you finish high school, you have to go to the university if you want to continue your education. Right. Uh, but uh, my parent, my mother, my mother was uh, also a um, trader. She sold fish and other uh, produce, produce at the market. So she would get up early in the morning, go to the market, buy smoked fish and dried fish okay. and salt fish and other fish. and brought them to the market, okay. uh, to the village, and she retailed them, and, and so that's what she did. Okay. Uh, so financially, I couldn't go to university in Ghana because I couldn't afford it. So uh, trying to find my way, I first left Ghana to go to Nigeria. Okay. So I lived in Nigeria okay. for a while. I was doing photography. I was professional photographer. Photograph okay. yeah, Newspaper that, or just uh, no the portraits. Uh, uh, portrait. Portrait. Uh, um, so uh, just we had a, the instant camera at the time. Right. So uh, that's what I was doing. And uh, when I was in high school, uh, in, I, I left my village to go to high school in uh, Swedro. Uh, first, I was in Accra with my brother, who was working there. And then uh, two years later, I left that high school to go to another high school in Suedro. That's when I learned photography, photography. from a friend from okay. who had a studio, learned how to develop and how to do all of that. Oh, very uh, interesting. So, and religion uh, was still an important part of, of your course, life? Of course. I mean, okay. wherever we went, uh, I was in the, growing up, I was in the choir, uh, even as a child that I wasn't big enough, I was in the choir. My choir robe was bigger than <laughs> I was, so they had to. But you're singing I away. was singing. Okay. Uh, I was active in the church, cleaning the church. Always a Methodist church. Methodist okay. church. Okay. Uh, you know, you have to ring the bell in okay. the village. Uh, the bell sound, wherever you are in the village, you'll hear the you church hear bell the ringing. Church bell so sing. that was okay. my responsibility. Oh, you actually also. rang the bell? I was ringing, getting up, uh, go ring the first <laughs> bell, and then second bell for people to come to church. So my uh, religious Niger upbringing. Uh, was always with you. Yeah, it was always with me. Even when I was in Nigeria, yeah, okay. going back and forth uh, in Nigeria to Ghana, uh, when I was in Nigeria, I would be buying photographic uh, materials at a time uh, and then bring them to Ghana at okay. 19 years. And then uh, no, you had your own back. business. Yeah, I was you had practicing my own and business. Well. Yes, and then uh, later on, I had opportunity to go to Germany to, to study or to just study, photography uh, to study. Uh, but uh, when I went to Germany, uh, I did a language. Uh, German is difficult, isn't it? Uh, very difficult. Very Getting into the education was uh, difficult. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough, so. Yeah. Uh, God made a way for me to leave Germany to come to the United States. How, let me real quick. How long were you in Nigeria? I was back and forth. Back and forth. I was uh, going from Nigeria to Ghana. Uh, the period of about one and a half years. Okay. How yes. long in Germany? I was in two years in Germany. Oh, quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. I've had friends who've gone to Germany and they just said the, the language is so difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. They had that. They had that. But yeah. I, I was able to learn the language. Uh, I used to be able to speak it fluently. Sure. I could write it and everything. Okay. Uh, so so you're about, nine, I mean, to find the age, 19, 20, about 22, 20, 22 years, okay. uh, that's when I came to the United okay. States. Now, where did you come here? Uh, I came here to study. Okay. I had opportunity to come here, and the uh, idea is to come and study. And so I, I have a cousin who, uh, through her, I was able to... Uh, come and so when where, I came, where in the United States? I came to um, Tacoma Park in oh, in right the, here, yeah, Logan. in now uh, Maryland. So uh, you went from so tropical, uh, tropical yeah. Ghana yeah. to hot and humid and freezing. Correct, Highsville, yeah. Highsville, yeah, yeah. Highsville. Okay. That's where my cousin was living. Okay. So I came there. And then um, I lived in Washington D.C. Right. Uh, uh, about a few months later, I lived with uh, a friend um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, That's where uh, I lived before I was able to uh, meet my wife. Okay. Uh, this is 19, help me the year. This is uh, 1983. Oh, 83. 80s. Okay, yeah, 83. I came to the United States in uh, May 83. Okay. Uh, so 
Uh, and right to school or working uh, or both? No, I didn't uh, go right to school. Uh, I was working, trying okay. to get my Pay the feet, feet grounded. Okay. And so, but later, I was able to uh, go to school. This is about in 1989. Uh, that's when I, I started uh, college uh, at Tacoma Park, uh, Montgomery College. Montgomery College, College Tacoma Park, okay. Correct. One of so, their campuses, yes. okay. That's, so that's where I started going to now, college. Now, always with the idea of the ministry or not? No, no ministry no. was not Wasn't even on the radar, okay. No, okay. Uh, it's way behind you know, my thought. When I was growing back or going in Ghana, growing up in Ghana, uh, that was, uh, I wish I could, because in Ghana, the opportunity was not uh, easy. Um, you really you have to have some, okay. know somebody oh. within the ministry to, let you to lead you and guide you and mentor you. And the school, there were only one theological uh, college in Ghana, in Ghana at the time when I was growing up. So it was very competitive. I didn't know anybody. Nobody in my family was... Um, well, one uh, door was closed, you or, found another. Exactly. So I wanted to become an electrical engineer. Uh, oh, That was my oh, uh, dream. Tough, toughest curriculum. That right, was my, my, my dream. So okay. in Montgomery College, I studied engineering science. Okay. Um, so when I finished that, I transferred to College Pack, uh, University of Maryland. University of Maryland. Correct. Well, that's where I graduated okay. from. We're fellow terrorists. That's right. right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's where and you I... And now you graduated from Maryland with an engineering? No, no? I didn't graduate. Okay. Uh, when I was in Maryland, I was very active. At this time, I was very active in the church. I okay. was a um, uh, member of the Methodist Church in Hyattsville. Uh, at the same time, I was fellowshipping with a Ghanaian congregation. Okay. In the morning, I would go to the Methodist Church, and in the afternoon, I would go to the Ghanaian congregation. Okay. So I found myself growing in the Lord at this time. So when I was in uh, University of Maryland, working on my bachelor's in electrical engineering, I, uh, I was good. Uh, you know, I was getting a little bit of every grade, mm -hmm. but I was good. Yes, sir. Um, but with 20 credit hours to finish my bachelor's, at this time I just couldn't contain myself with the call of God on my life. And it took I, a whole different I, direction. Yes, it's, uh, it's, I just couldn't contain it. So prayerfully, I uh, decided to let go of the engineering uh, study, and then I enrolled in a Bible college at uh, uh, Washington Bible College sure. in uh, Lanham. Right. Yes. Okay. So I said, let me take a... Uh, summer off and then try the Bible College and I went there and it was like a day and that night. Was yeah, it was, that was uh, your call? It was uh, obvious. So I continued my education there, did um, uh, bachelor's in biblical studies. Okay. At, uh, well, you're engineering for God now rather than engineering buildings. Correct. Okay. So well. I'm going to engineer people to God look at, instead of... Now, um, look, at, believe it or not, our time is just about up, so we're going to speed it up. Okay. How did you get to Senegal? Okay. And another time, we're going to talk about your wonderful wife and all these other experiences, because how did you end up here? Senegal, when I finished Bible College, I went to seminary, and then in seminary, when I finished seminary in uh, Washington, uh, D.C., that was Wesley Theological Seminary. Right, right I was by a American University. Correct. Sure, I know. Yeah. Member of the United Methodist Church, and so uh, part of the Washington Baltimore Conference, okay. but the Peninsula Delaware Conference came to campus to recruit uh, pastors. I brought my resume and uh, uh, before I knew, I was called by the district superintendent in East. And we got lucky and got and you. And then in 1999, July, okay. I uh, was appointed to uh, what was then Charles Wesley United right. Methodist Church okay. and Earl's Chapel and New Zion. There were three churches together. So you've been here since 1999? I've been here since anyway, July so 1999. So 13, 14 years. This is my 14th year. year. Well, congratulations uh, on 14 thank years. Thank you. Now, believe it or not, we're about running out of time. We're going to get you to come back in a month. Okay. And we'll fill in the blanks. Okay. But here's the important thing I want you to do. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of seconds here, New Life Community United Methodist Church, guests are invited. Correct. Anytime. Correct. And what are the service times again on Our Sunday? Our service start at 10.30 okay. in the morning. And we run anywhere uh, from 10.30 to 12, uh, you know, around that okay. yeah, worship. They place. can call ahead if they want to check. Yeah, yes. we, uh, you know, we, we have... Um, uh, directory and also we are on the county um, uh, 
on the list. Right. So all is uh, there a website? Yeah, we our website is not active yet. Okay, but also we're going to hook you up with some good websites. Okay, people. I write a, <laughs> um, uh, articles in the Record Observer, okay. so my uh, information is you always can uh, with you, uh, there. So well, Reverend, look at uh, I apologize. I do appreciate the wonderful geography yeah. lesson. Thank right? you very much. Will you much. come back in about another month? It's my pleasure. And we'll Anytime. talk again. And maybe we can get Walter Pauls or somebody and we can sing some songs and scare everybody away. That would be away. great. Okay. And if you want the men to come to oh, maybe the we can do that. sing about, oh, do about 15 or whatever, okay. uh, we can, we can do that. We can so do let that. us know and we will be here to right. continue this. Okay, well again, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Uh, my name's Fred McNeil. You've been watching Discover Queen Anne's. And thank you for your time. And we're going to see you next time.